No hospital functions without them. Every day, everywhere, they help save lives. But are they what they seem? This is the series that tells the stories of nurses who kill. It took her 45 minutes to die. So it can't have been a very quick death. It can't have been an easy death. One died of me today. That's terrible. You poor thing. It's OK. It's fine for me. I knew it was going to happen. Stefan Letter was superficially a model German nurse, but in fact, he was deeply damaged almost from the day he was born. We have to understand that the world looks different from the perspective of somebody who has psychological damage. An individual with psychological damage might view the world as a hostile place. And his psychological problem, his mother. She spent years telling him and everyone around him that he was slow-witted, educationally subnormal. Of course, all of those labels parents give their children have a huge impact on them. So if a child is told, you are not like your peers, you cannot do what other children do, that is going to affect their personality. Using dramatic reconstructions of real life events, this program will ask, is Stefan Letter responsible for the murder of dozens on wards at Sonthoven Hospital? He was one of the biggest mass murderers since the Second World War. And that in such a picturesque area, such a peaceful region. Stefan Letter is either a deeply damaged man from the foothills of the Alps who needs to be treated, or he is Germany's worst mass murderer since 1945, killing at least 28 vulnerable elderly patients, and he should be reviled. Which is it? No one denies he was very good at his job. Letters was seen as a good nurse. He was seen as a team player, somebody who was friendly, reliable and hardworking. So we nearly lost one today, a patient. I could see her slipping away. I got there just in the nick of time. If I'd have been there 30 seconds later, she would have been dead. Sounds impressive. I guess. Some you win, some you lose. Literally. Sondhoven, Bavaria, 2003, nestling in the Alps. This clinic in the town was to become the scene of a troubling mystery. Why were patients dying? Why are bodies still being exhumed in this devout Catholic part of Germany? How many families are waiting for the results of autopsies up to two years after they buried their loved ones? A series of inexplicable deaths were at first put down to natural causes. It's not unusual in a hospital that people die, particularly older patients. And it seems that most of his uh, victims were over 75. So you would expect that maybe they die from complications or they are just too weak. No one had added up what was happening in front of their eyes. But some of the patients had begun to add up what was happening. Some patients seemed to have an inkling that something was not quite right. There was one case where a 90-year-old woman begged the, her relatives to stay on her bedside because she had the feeling she needed them. Something was not quite right and they actually didn't leave her alone with that nurse, and she survived. Her relatives later told that they had the feeling that someone was coming in and checking during the night several times. They assumed that that might have been Stefan, who might have had some very dark intentions. 
some of the elderly patients had expressed a concern about being left alone with Stefan Letter. In fact, they had said, don't leave me alone with this man. And it wasn't just one person who you could say, perhaps that's a, a personality clash. This was more than one patient, and that's definitely uh, a red flag in these circumstances. Stefan Letter, at 25 years old, he is a willing worker, happy to work the night shifts. He's in a difficult relationship with his wife, Daniela. You're quiet. He's respected by his colleagues, but not always trusted by the patients. The elderly 90-year-old who had worried about him was not an isolated case. Another older patient called Gertrude found him discomforting to be with. Gertrude did try to raise the alarm. She warned her family she thought somebody on the ward was trying to kill her. Now, obviously, elderly people in hospital are scared. They can be very worried. Often they have a lot of other medical problems going on. And so if somebody said that to you, you might not necessarily think what they were saying was true. You shouldn't bottle it up, whatever it is. It's just something at work. A woman, a patient. She got the wrong impression about something. Letter would be at pains to reassure relatives like those of Gertrude that older people got confused. They might think something was going on when nothing was really untoward. It was only natural for them to worry. But throughout these two years, other mysterious events were happening on the ward. Vials of drugs were going missing. A nurse? noticed that 10 vials were missing from a medical cupboard. And she thought an outsider had taken them. So she and her colleagues put locks on that cupboard and only the medical personnel had keys for it. But six weeks later, she and her colleagues the hospital found that actually a huge amount of medication was missing. And they only found out because they had to order so much more. And it was um, very particular medication. Not very dangerous in themselves, but put together the combination could be deadly. And that was um, sedatives, anesthetics and muscle relaxants. There was already a small suspicion who could have taken it. The nurse most on duty when the drugs went missing was Stefan Letter. It was a different time. Medical staff enjoyed more freedom when on duty. Nowadays, in hospitals, we're very strict with drug checks and with stock takes and with counting drugs in and out, and obviously less so when Letter was on the ward. And it was actually found out because the nurse followed him in where he was taking the drugs from and realised the stock was going down immediately after he'd been in there. They were suspicious and they prepared a trap. Before one of his night shifts, because he had specialised in night shifts, they checked the cupboard and they checked it afterwards again. And they found that there was a shortfall of this medication. You could only have taken out this medication with a written instruction by a doctor, but there was no written instruction of a doctor. So um, that was the beginning. But it was not enough for the hospital management to either discipline letter or to call in the police. Stealing medication is a very serious issue. If a nurse is found to have done it, it's a dismissible offence. Drugs are tightly monitored in hospitals and the reason for that is because they're, they're usually dangerous. And you have to go through quite a few procedures really to be able to steal drugs. There is usually a trail. So if you do start stealing drugs, that is a big step in your sort of criminal career, if you like. You have to know that that's being monitored. You have to plan to be able to do that. So that, it takes um, a little bit of confidence, criminal confidence, if you like. And when people do steal drugs, it's never for any good reason. 
So, I mean, they could be using drugs themselves, which would obviously create great problems for somebody who is working in a place such as a hospital. They could be selling the drugs on, or they could be using them to hurt people. Because of its seriousness, the authorities needed more evidence. The next step they did was um, checking the staff rotor against the times the medication went missing. And they found that during Stefan's shifts, those medications were gone missing. But still, that was not considered enough to interrogate Nurse Letter. Drugs going missing, complaints about Stefan. There was a real suspicion amongst senior staff that they had a rogue nurse on their hands. But nobody had an inkling of anything else. Nobody thought they had a killer on the wards. I may not have told you everything about me. You mean you have a secret? How exciting. Not exciting. That's not exactly the word I would use. What word would you use? We know that Stefan Letter comes from a pretty troubled family and that started already very early. We believe that his mother was um, suffering from something like Münchhausen by proxy, which means that she wanted to get attention from doctors uh, by having a sick child. So she made him sick by giving him medication that he didn't need. You know, I know we have things to talk about. It is better if we actually talk about them. You seem to think that talking about it is the answer, but it isn't. You also seem to think that I have a problem with you, but it's not just about you. Who was the man patrolling the wards at Sondhofen? Whilst his bosses knew about Stefan at his professional past, they could know nothing of his private traumas. His had not been a happy life. He had major issues with women, and those issues began early. We know that letters came from this family where his mother treated him in this very peculiar way. Possibly she was psychiatrically disturbed. She was making him ill, she was giving him diagnoses. And obviously on a young child that would have had quite a severe impact on how his personality developed. And the illnesses that Stefan's mother were telling him he had were about his mind. He would be told repeatedly he was slow, she would take him to child psychologists, insisting they diagnose him with some sort of learning difficulty. His childhood was something of an ordeal. Stefan Letter was allegedly made to undergo unnecessary testing by his mother as a child. Now, this can have a significant effect on an individual's development through crucial years. Why? Why? The silent treatment, the, the moods, the... Darkness. You have to ask me that. You, of all people. If a child is told you are not like your peers, you cannot do what other children do, that is going to affect their personality, it's going to affect their emotional development, it's going to affect their cognitive development. And it obviously left him very severely psychologically scarred, as you would expect. Stefan Letter may have felt that he was ostracised, that he was different. He may have felt, found it very difficult to form peer relationships, and his relationship with his mother would have changed as a result of this un unnecessary testing that he allegedly underwent. That time with your mother was a long time ago. Let it go. But it's a part of me, can't you see that? It's not helping you to remember. Forget what she said, forget what she did. You didn't have a mother like mine. She's not easy to forget. He came to his father when he was around seven, um, and his father had to bring him to school because Stefan himself by then was already a troubled child. He had difficulties to really relate to other school children and had problems in school. And that didn't become any better. 
So Letter's early life was miserable. He was scarred forever, jaundiced perhaps against suffering. Suffering could be cured. People could be put out of their misery, he would say. Stefan Letter was in conflict with the world. Certainly, as a child, Stefan Letter would have felt that he didn't have a place amongst his peers. We know that as children, we learn as much about the world around us from our peers, from school, from social engagements, as we do from our parents and our level of parenting. I was just being. There was something wrong, something in here. And I, and nobody else mattered, I mattered. I looked after me. As he wandered the night shift of the hospital, Nurse Letter buried his psychological issues well enough for his colleagues not to notice. He had begun to break the rules, both trivial and serious. It had been in early spring 2003 that he began to steal. His enthusiasm to work the antisocial shifts put down to his ambitious nature. He'd always wanted to work in medicine. So his dream was to become a doctor, but his grades weren't good enough. So he settled for becoming a nurse. You've made a good life for yourself. I'm a nurse. Me, the slow child, the washout, the son the mother couldn't love. A nurse now. You don't have to convince me. I'm not your mother. Simply nobody knew about the hang-ups that Letter would later claim had become such an influence on his behaviour. He was the sometimes over-earnest young man volunteering for extra shifts, caring for older patients, and all the while having power over the life and death of patients. All doctors and all nurses are in a position where they're looking after vulnerable people. They have tools which can be life-saving, but which can also be incredibly, incredibly dangerous. And so, of course, there's a huge amount of trust that we place in healthcare professionals to behave well, to have integrity, and to put their patients first and foremost. The mixed-up kid who'd become a nurse was riddled with issues and problems. His mother's alleged mental torture of him was not the only evidence he would later offer in mitigation for his behavior. He had problems in the relationship with his wife, too. Daniela was herself damaged, abused as a child. He also chose a girlfriend, or he fell for a girl who was uh, probably sexually abused by a grandfather. Letter had told friends that all he wanted to do was to find the right girl, marry her, settle down, work as a nurse. At 25, he had achieved everything he wanted. He dreamt of a house in the Alps, in the Bavarian Alps, in the Algo, which is a beautiful area, it's a beautiful region. He wanted to have a family. So in the end, he got something. Um, he moved in a nice apartment in the Alps. He achieved what were really quite normal and small ambitions in his life. He wanted to get married and have a relationship. He wanted somewhere stable to live. He wanted to be a nurse and working in a hospital near to where he lived. And it seemed that he did, on the face of it, achieve those things. But Letter's dream did not come true. Once again, the woman in his life was not what he wanted. Should we have some friends over? Friends? People from work? Next door? I don't think so. How about we just have a night in? Letter's theft of muscle relaxant drugs from the hospital was, he would claim one day, all about the needs of his wife. This was the bombshell story that he delivered to detectives. Stefan Letter says that he was stealing drugs because his girlfriend had intimacy issues. He says he was going to try and use the muscle relaxants to address these intimacy issues in his relationship. In fact, the issues with his, in his relationship with his girlfriend probably ran much deeper than that. It is not uncommon 
to find two psychologically vulnerable or damaged individuals who form a close relationship with each other. Relax. I can't. Look, it's natural. You just need to let go. What do you want from me? I need to stop. You could show some interest. And you could show some understanding and sympathy. Why can't we just be like a normal couple? There'll be lots of people who have issues with relationships or with marriages that go wrong or with intimacy that's very difficult. And in most people that won't go on to cause any problem, it won't go on to cause any huge psychological problem. But in somebody who's already traumatised from a childhood, who already has a personality disorder, all of these issues will add up and create further problems and further impact on what they're going to go on and do. What time are you home? When the shift ends. When else? What shall I do today? Go see a doctor. Get something. Be normal. If what Letter says is true about his wife, the failure of this aspect of his marriage may have had a bigger effect than it would on the relationship between people who were not carrying psychological baggage from their childhood. For Stefan Letter, he found somebody with whom he could be codependent. Now, it may have been that his relationship with his girlfriend was compensatory and they were making up for deficits in each other's emotional repertoire. Or it could have been that for Stefan Letter and his girlfriend, they both had a similar view of the world and that view held them together in a close bond. That he was not able to be intimate with his girlfriend would have struck a particular chord with him because he would have wanted to share his view of the world with his partner. For Stefan Letter, it was important for him to establish that he had a concrete relationship with his partner. Such was Letter's story. He'd been damaged as a child inside the family. All he wanted as he grew was his own perfect relationship, and instead he had married a similarly damaged person. Their sex life was non-existent. So he began to steal drugs muscle relaxants, they might help her. To let her, drugs were the cure for all ills. He doesn't seem to be a very lucky man or a very happy man. And this is the nurse on the ward, suspected of stealing. But was he up to much worse? And if he was, when would anybody find out? After months of patients dying who should not have died, the authorities were still not putting two and two together. There were a couple of things that perhaps should have raised concerns for people. Firstly, were the complaints from the elderly patients that they didn't want to be left on their own with him. That meant that his behaviour perhaps changed when he was on his own, when he wasn't being observed. And that definitely should be a red flag. The second red flag is the theft of the drugs and that being related to specifically when he was on shift. At the time, those two things may have seemed manageable because what had not been noticed at that time was that people were being murdered. The night shift on Sonthoven Hospital sometime in 2003. Not a safe place to be. On duty, Stefan Letter. Most of the patients at the hospital where Nurse Letter worked were elderly. He preferred the night shifts when staff numbers were reduced, giving him the freedom to prowl from cubicle to cubicle. He seems to have targeted very vulnerable patients and during nights, so at a time where someone who's ill, who's sick, is feeling very vulnerable anyway. Letter chose to target elderly patients. Obviously a very easy target for somebody like him. Hospital management teams and the medics on the ward would not assume foul play of a patient who is 79 dies. The currency of a working day in a hospital involves dealing with death. 
It wouldn't be so unusual for a 79 year old lady to die in hospital. Obviously the elderly are more vulnerable, are weaker. It also wouldn't be unusual for somebody to die who'd been admitted with a heart attack. Obviously that's a very serious medical condition. So after an isolated incident of the death of a 79 year old lady, I don't think anybody would reasonably raise an alarm. So when a series of older patients passed away over several weeks, it did not attract the attention of either staff or police. In such a ward as he was working on, people are expected to die. At some point, elderly people, ill people. Um, so when they do die, it doesn't necessarily raise any problems for anybody working on the ward. Which nurse Stefan Letter knew all too well. This man was very determined and, and planned what he was going to do. He, went, he was working at the hospital, he chose to work on the night shift, and night shifts have a lot less supervision than, than day shifts, a lot less going on, certainly no relatives around. He was also very clever in the way that he sedated his victims first so that they wouldn't be concerned about what he was doing. And he then overdosed them with muscle relaxant, which had the effect of, of actually killing them. So he was, very, he was very planned and determined in what he was doing. Nurses who kill tend to do so the same way. Few vary their modus operandi. In the case of Stefan Letter, his drug of choice was succinyl choline. His method involved a two-stage process. He first made them unconscious, or at least they couldn't defend themselves anymore. Letters specifically used a sedative in order to calm patients down. If you give a sedative to a patient who you're trying to harm, it makes them far less likely to be able to retaliate or to protect themselves. And then he administered the second injection. A muscle relaxant known as succinylcholine. Succinylcholine causes muscle paralysis, so we use it routinely in a hospital when people are anaesthetised and actually it stops them breathing and then during an anaesthetic a respiratory machine is used so people are breathing artificially. But obviously if you're giving it in this way, in the way that Letter did, you're basically stopping somebody from breathing but not actually helping them in any way. At this stage in 2003, it is likely that Letter had killed at least a dozen times. The best scenario for Letter to continue to get away with killing patients would have involved targeting someone whose death would be something which may rationally have happened anyway. He happened on the perfect victim, a lady called Beata. In Beata's case, she was an elderly lady who was admitted to hospital having had a heart attack, but had been sitting up in bed and talking and actually seemed fine. And then later on that evening, after being treated by Letta, she actually had a respiratory arrest. And that is due to the succinylcholine that he used. Beata, like so many, was to die. Still, nobody suspected a killer was on the wards. It was around this time, however, that staff at the hospital were to again notice that drugs were being stolen. Drugs destined to be taken back to Letter's home. Why do you think you won't get caught? It's a busy place. Things go missing all the time. You seem very sure. What, so you think there's someone watching me? Checking up on me? A nurse went to the, to the drug cabinet and there, there were about 20 vials of this particular drug in the cabinet, so it was well stocked with this particular drug. That nurse left the room and then Stefan went into the room. Now, on going back into the room quite soon after, the other nurse that had seen the 20 vials noticed that half of them were missing, 10 vials were missing and the only person who had been in there was Stefan Letter. Finally, there was enough evidence for the hospital to contact the police. Arresting detectives were about to hear an amazing story. As soon as Letter was arrested for stealing these medications, when he was in the police car, he actually admitted the murder of these patients who were in his care. 
and on arrival at the police station, Letta asked for a pen and paper. He started to confess. And then at one point, he wrote six pages of confessions. Included in the confession, how he had flippantly reacted in front of the family members of one of his victims. One died of me today. That's terrible. You poor thing. It's OK. It's fine for me. I knew it was going to happen. But still, who was it? What sort of person? It was an old woman. I saw her kids. They must have been really upset. Yeah, I just opened up the window and said, there, her soul can go free. You sound mean. But this was far from a case closed, especially after what happened next. He changed his story. He had not killed, he said. He was simply trying to cover something else up. There was a good reason that he had stolen drugs. He said, after arrest that the reason he had the drugs in his house was that he was going to use them with his wife because she had severe intimacy issues. Detectives were unconvinced of his sudden retraction, but what could they do now? They also realized that they really needed hard proof um, to make their case because um, he only told them what if he just denied everything? So they needed to get proof. That meant uh, exhuming the bodies. This region of Germany has a great number of devout Catholics. They were to hear news, which left many bewildered. The impact of these killings on the relatives, on the community, on the hospital, would have been massive. Firstly, because nobody even knew that these killings were taking place. And relatives had already been through most of the grief process. They thought that they had put their loved ones to rest and to suddenly be told, actually, your mum, your dad was murdered and we're going to exhume the body, would have a huge impact. At times, the relationship between Stefan and Daniela had become fraught. He claims his theft of drugs was about curing her of her intimacy issues. Who the hell are you? What makes you so cold to me? Me cold? Me? That's rich. I am who I am. You knew that when you married me. Yeah, well, I didn't know everything, did I? After his arrest, the claim he made about his relationship problems were not the only things he was candid about. Nurse Stefan Letter had shocked Germany with a confession of multiple murders. With gruesome exhumations of bodies which had been buried for up to 18 months now underway, the question police needed to answer was simple. Had Letter lied when he confessed, or had he lied when he retracted his confession? They soon got their answer. The confession, first of all, was surprising because nobody was actually looking for strange deaths on the ward, so th this came as a bit of a shock. For Stefan Letter to confess spontaneously in the police car after he'd been arrested for the theft of drugs, we must consider what function that behaviour was serving. And that started them immediately to investigate those deaths. He did, however, then go on to retract that admission, confession, and the, the problem is, for him, they had already started exhuming bodies, so his retraction then was not worth much. For Stefan Letter, it may have been that the murders were serving an emotional purpose for him. They were filling an emotional gap or meeting an emotional need, and he wanted to declare this. It may have been that he was seeking attention. The attention-seeking nurse letter was by 2004 thought to have killed on numerous occasions, but exactly how many? The authorities really did some math. He had worked there for one year and a half. Um, during this time, 83 of the patients had died. They didn't know who else might have been killed by him. About half of them were already cremated. That meant 43 were exhumed. 43 sets of mortal remains 
of those patients. And they were between 40 years old and 94. They were um, female, male. They didn't have any pattern to go for. They just thought, okay, we just need to do this. Forensic science has come a long way, but the exhumation process was never going to be easy. Digging up a body is straightforward, but finding traces of the relevant chemicals is not. They needed to test the bodies, and that in itself was again a huge operation because they didn't really know how to test the mortal remains for that. Um, so they needed to use new and a very sophisticated analysis to find traces of those drugs. And in the end, it took them several months um, for the autopsy to do all those testing, but they could prove that um, they, had, they were administered um, huge doses of these drugs just before the death. So that was the proof they needed to make the case against Stefan. As the months passed and with the evidence mounting, Letter eventually accepted his guilt and remained consistent in that confession. He admitted to killing at least 16 times, but agreed there may be more victims. They found traces in 23 sets of mortal remains, but they had also the 16 he had already confessed to, even though he retracted. So only 10 of those belonged to the group he already had confessed to. So the police suddenly ended up with 13 more bodies who showed traces of that deadly drug combination. So that meant he probably not only had killed 16, as he had confessed first, but possibly over 20. And that was just the start. How big is his victim count? To this day, the authorities are testing the remains of bodies, searching for evidence of the substances that he had used to kill. But he has now stood trial, and he has been found guilty. He's been found guilty of killing 28 people. He's been convicted of 12 uh, counts of murder, 15 counts of manslaughter, and one count of illegal mercy killing because the a prosecutor couldn't prove that um, the victim didn't ask for, for, for death, basically, for a mercy killing. I could see her slipping away. I got there just in the nick of time. If I'd have been there 30 seconds later, she would have been dead. The story doesn't actually end there with Letter, although he's been convicted, because they are not sure how many more victims there are. They have gone on to exhume bodies from patients who were in his care to see whether or not there is evidence of drugs he may have used, and actually to see if there were, in fact, many more victims than he claimed. It could be argued that Stephen Letter is the worst serial killer that Germany has seen since the Second World War such is the number of people that he's killed, but, but also because we don't know how many there are. But why? Why did he do it? What was the reason that Stefan Letter killed and killed and killed again? According to forensic psychologist D. Anand, it made him feel important. To fully understand the function of his murderous acts, we must explore with Stefan Letter what his understanding of the consequences of his actions were. He may only have a focus on the consequences for himself, their impact on his own self-worth and identity. He may not have a, con a concept of the consequence for the families of his victims. It may be that the emotional deficit in Stefan Letter's life was that he did not feel a sense of worth, he did not feel needed, he did not feel that he was an important man in his own life. As for Letter, he claimed his actions were all about trying to help. Just as he had suffered and been shoved from doctor to doctor as a child, so elderly patients were suffering and he, Stefan Letter, could put them out of their misery. Well, straight from the beginning, he said he felt pity for his victims and that was the reason uh, he killed them. He claimed they were all mercy killings. He said people asked him, his victims or some of his victims, asked him for a quick death. 
It's easy to say from his point of view that these were mercy killings because he's talking about elderly, seemingly vulnerable patients. But actually, when you look at the victims, they weren't weak or vulnerable. Some of the people were just going in for a simple medical condition like gallstones. They weren't actually people at the end of their life. The prosecutor doubted that very much, police as well, just because of the drugs he used. He combined two drugs. He combined either a sedative or an anesthetic plus a muscle relaxant, and that meant that his patient suffocated. And um, that took them probably five minutes to die. Stefan Letter cannot claim to have had an emotional connection with his patients. He did not know his patients well enough. His actions showed a complete disregard for their well-being and for the, the consequences for the patient's family. I've read about one case uh, and it took her 45 minutes to die. So it can't have been a very quick death. It can't have been an easy death. Uh, it must have been painful. It must have been terrifying. Um, so that's the reason the police and the prosecutors very early on didn't really believe his claim. A lot of the people who he killed were not terminally ill. They were even being prepared to leave hospital. So that excuse uh, is not particularly strong. At his trial, he read a statement and he says he acknowledges his guilt and he regrets that he took away the rest of the lives of those patients. But he also tried to explain it again and said he acted out of um, spontaneous sympathy and to help them. So how many then? It is not known, which is agony for those left behind. It's actually still a mystery for some of the relatives because their loved ones were cremated. So they could never find out if they were killed by Stefan or not. So, um, it must have been quite a hard time for the relatives back then, not only for the ones where um, their family members were dug up, but also for the ones which could never get an answer. How does anyone end up like Nurse Stefan Letter? It's very difficult to speculate why somebody might become a serial killer. And usually it's lots of different things coming together in time and space. It's not helping you to remember. Forget what she said, forget what she did. You didn't have a mother like mine. She's not easy to forget. I think it's hard to understand how somebody like Stefan Letter is created. Is there a personality disorder there? Is that childhood trauma? Is it the environment? Is it narcissism? Most of the time, serial killers will be on um, a psychopathic spectrum, so they'll, they'll have great difficulties with sympathy and, and empathy. They'll have a, perhaps a certain arrogance about them and a certain isolation about them. They'll also have quite a lot of um, skills in manipulation. I think probably the truth is that a psychopath like him is created really by all of those things, possibly even some genetics in there as well. We don't actually know. And when you have somebody who has a personality like that, who has adverse uh, happenings in their childhood, you start to put those two two things together and you're starting to build a problem. And in this case, some of the adverse things that happened to him in his childhood were related to the, the medical establishment being taken to hospitals all the time, um, seeing doctors and potentially feeling very powerless. Stefan Letter was found guilty of killing 28 of his patients and has been sentenced to life in prison. Exhumations began in 2008 and they continue to this day. It has now been confirmed that Letter is Germany's worst serial killer since 1945.